So the Conservatives are a Blairite party, and this has been confessed by David Cameron. Uh, they are what the Labour Party have made of them. Tony Blair has, since his tenure in began in 1997, has sculpted this country into his vision of the future. And the Conservatives are just so trapped within this paradigm, it seems that Peter Hitchens is right and the Conservative Party must be destroyed. But before we begin, let's talk about how there's nothing new under the sun. How this is, yet again, an iteration, an echo of the past, if you will. There was another chap in English history who had a problem with immigrants. Mass immigration. Uncontrolled immigration. From the east. <laughs> from, from the continent. People just coming along in boats, rocking up on the shores, and taking our money. And that man's name was Ethelred the Unready. And this is very, very similar, in fact, in some ways, uh, to what is happening now. Now, he had the same problem with the Danes, rather than a collection of foreigners from further around the world. But uh, the, the point of this episode of Epochs is don't adopt Ethelred's solutions because they're bad. His solution was paying them to go away and then just trying to kill some of them as well. Neither of these solutions worked, of course. Uh, other solutions should be found. Anyway, Such if you a like, strong border controls. <laughs> such a strong border controls, which is incidentally the thing he didn't do. But uh, anyway, if you want to support us, go and sign up and watch that because it's good stuff. So let's begin in 2009 when we learned that the Labour government of about 2000 onwards uh, had specifically opened Britain's borders in order to make the UK more multicultural, as in this was a deliberate attempt at social engineering of the United Kingdom, and this was, quote, to rub the right nose in diversity, according to Andrew Nether, a former advisor to Tony Blair, Jack Straw, and David Blunkett, three key members of the Labour cabinet, and of course Tony Blair being the Prime Minister. He said, Labour's relaxation of controls was a deliberate plan to open up the UK to mass immigration, but ministers were nervous and reluctant to discuss such a move publicly for fear it would alienate its core working class vote. Isn't that just grim? Isn't that evil? So we're going to open up this country and absolutely ruin it and bring in millions of foreigners. I know the working class aren't going to like it, so we're just going to hide that from them. We're just not going to talk about it until it's too late. He said, Labour's relaxation of controls, uh, I've read that bit actually, uh, as a result, the public argument for immigration concentrated instead on the economic benefits and the need for more migrants. And now this was written in 2009. Lo little did they know that the argument would really be, but think of the restaurants. <laughs> <laughs> Look, okay, we know that it doesn't bring in money like people say it does. It's a huge drain. Yeah, it, no, it doesn't. makes uh, demand for everything so unreasonably high constantly that we could yeah. ever solve any problems, but my coffee at Pret. Yes. <laughs> Uh, critics said the revelations show a conspiracy within the government to impose mass immigration for cynical reasons. Uh, cynical is deeply Sorry. understating it. It's openly malevolent. Just what was with the conspiracy aspect? It's like, oh, maybe this happened. I mean, they literally say privately they didn't tell the public yeah. because they knew they would hate it. I mean, it was literally a conspiracy. And it wasn't cynical, it was malevolence. Uh, so, writing the Evening Standard, Nether said that the major shift in immigration policy came after the publication of a policy uh, paper from the Performance and Innovation Unit uh, in Downing Street in 2000. Earlier drafts I saw included a driving political purpose, that mass immigration was a way that the government was going to make the UK truly multicultural. I remember coming away from some discussions with a clear sense that the policy was intended, even if this wasn't its main purpose, to rub the right's nose in diversity and render their arguments out of date. So this was about winning the political argument against the Conservatives. Socially engineering well, this country. And how so? I mean, to drastically change the makeup of the United Kingdom so then any yep. appeals to cultural norms or yep. traditions of the Anglo-Saxons yep. became, as he puts it, uh, out of date. Yep. The deliberate policy from late 2000 until February 2009 was when the points-based system was introduced uh, because of the catastrophe, uh, was to open up the UK to mass migration. Some 2.3 million migrants were added to the population since then, according to Whitehall estimates. It's 15 million now. 15 million, at least, now. One in four. One in four. Nether said that bringing in hundreds of thousands more migrants to plug labour market gaps uh, was uh, also a driving per political purpose behind the immigration policy. So uh, my GDP is also tacked on the end there. My GDP, bro. Uh, no, no one ever looks at the GDP per capita. That's, no, that's not important. Is anyone actually getting richer? No, but the gross number is bigger. Is, any, is anyone having an easier time buying a house? No. <laughs> no, of course not. Uh, but he he said he defended this policy, saying it's enriched Britain. 
Are you feeling uh, the cultural enrichment, Callum? It's made London a more attractive and cosmopolitan place. <laughs> 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 this was only 13 years ago. 13 years ago, he wrote this article. It's not oh, even God. a very long time. <laughs> it's just now it's an international embarrassment of a city that nobody in this country wants to move to if they Stabbing can help it. Stabbing capital of Europe. I mean, literally, the people who live there, who are, you know, the English, endlessly moving out. Yeah, so. Uh, from this, we know that mass immigration was viewed as a, a political attack on the Conservative Party, and the Conservative Party were viewed as a kind of uh, psychic extension of the sort of native British people. Right, That's how the Labour Party were looking at this. Yeah, as uh, an old party for an old country. Yes, that's exactly right. And, and that's an interesting way of framing it, which, put a pin in that, we'll come back to that. Uh, and so they thought they would sacrifice the interests of the working class of this country uh, to try and conquer the Conservatives. Uh, this is entirely a political uh, social engineering scheme by Blair and his goons. And its success of this is, is really quite phenomenal because you get this sort of piece from David Cameron. Now, David Cameron, Prime Minister in 2010, in coalition with the Liberal Democrats, and he is just a creature of Blair. And this came out two days ago. He published this two days ago. So there's no, no understanding, no comprehension of how he has been captured by Tony Blair and the Labour Party. He, in fact, thinks it's good to virtue signal and genuflect to the left about diversity. He wrote this in The Times. David Cameron, we were all white men, so I did something about diversity. It's amazing how a, a former Conservative Prime Minister would think this is a good look. Like, how... How could he think this is what the British public were complaining about? Oh, you know what? Yeah, too many white men in politics. Then resign. Yeah, well, A, resign, but B, if you nobody cares. <laughs> the only people who, who care about that are the Labour Party. Oh. That was their deliberate attack, as they had already told us. So it's not like David Cameron can't have in access to this information either. But he says this, right? Watching the Conservative Party leadership contest takes me back to the contest I fought and won in 2005. I was one of seven MPs taking a part. All of us were white and all of us were male. It was no surprise the field was so narrow. We reflected a party whose 198 MPs included just 17 women and only two from ethnic minorities. We're the oldest political party in the world and we looked like it. Now there we go. That's what you're saying. It's like an old party for an old country. Yeah. And David Cameron being like, well, that's not very modern and progressive, is it? I'm progressive. Then why are you in the Conservative Party? Yes. Why are you manhandling and destroying the party that should be representative of the actual people who live here? And not just that, the, the ancient continuation of this country. Because that's the point. In Britain, especially in England, being old is something you take pride in. You know, this is an ancient church. This is an ancient town. You know, these things, the, the length of continuity is something we're, we're proud of. And so David Cameron being like, yeah, but actually, what if we become leftists and try and arrive at year zero. What if, what if I take this party and just rip out its spine? So That's, now it's somewhere that, you know, the academic agent couldn't even feel comfortable being around. Yes. Okay. Right. I ran on a platform of change to win and was determined to modernize the party. Modernize. Hate that term. Yeah, me too. Modernity seems to be... I can't swear. Just, just always seems to be <laughs> progressive. That's, yeah. that's all that word means to these people. Yes, th but that's exactly what modernize means. Uh, and so he started by addressing the appalling lack of diversity of conservative candidates and MPs. It's appalling, Callum. Appalling. To me, this agenda was never about political correctness. It was about political <laughs> effectiveness. <laughs> oh, amazing. But what, right, so this is a great statement. It's not about political correctness. That's presupposed. Right? I'm not going to challenge that value. Now it's about political effectiveness. How can I convert political correctness into votes for the Conservatives? It's like, okay, so you were literally going to allow the Labour Party to be the value-setting organ mm. of your political career. The correct politics is leftist identitarianism. Yep. In which case, how do we win that framework? That's yes, like. how do I win that, that competition, says David Cameron, someone who can't think for himself whatsoever. And so he said, it was, we, during my first week in the job, I made a speech explaining that it wasn't enough to open the door and say, come on in, when all these people would see is a sea of white male faces. We need to get out there and bring people in. So I immediately froze the selection of conservative candidates. I said that from our broader candidates list, we would draw up a priority list of which half would be female and a large proportion would be from black and ethnic minority backgrounds. Like, I feel like I'm, I'm listening to someone from Harvard's admissions board, you know, one of these yeah. loopy, blue-haired weirdos, yeah. telling me about how there's just not enough of X, Y group. Yeah. Uh, instead, leader of the Conservative Party at one point. Yeah. You know how the, the Labour Party want us to do everything? We can do it exactly that way. 
So, the, like, Tony Blair... I don't want the best person for the job. Tony Blair couldn't have... Like, if he was giving you direct instruction yeah. on how to do it, it would be exactly like this. Yeah. Joe Biden attitude, I don't want the blackest and the womanist. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's the, the spirit of Blair has just conquered the Conservatives here. Associations and winnable seats would have to choose from this A-list. So, I mean, literally diversity list. Uh, and they would be encouraged to select candidates through open primaries that were open to non-party members. Many on the right found this hard to swallow. It's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why won't the they just accept left-wing ideology? <laughs> yeah, many on the right were like, do we have to become leftists? And David Cameron's like, yeah. Conservative How else would we be right-wingers? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Conservatives have an aversion to positive discrimination. We believe... <laughs> <laughs> I love the way he speaks. As, it's not we have an aversion oh. to positive discrimination. No, what are those conservatives? I'm not part of that camp, really. Yeah. Like weird foreigners over there. We believe in... Oh, he does say we here, actually. We believe in people rising to the top through their own merits. The trouble is this just wasn't happening organically. I, I love... The, the progress isn't fast enough. We need to aid progress, says the Conservative Prime Minister. It's not progress if you have to make it artificially. Exactly, exactly. Um, so, uh, anyway, he says the number of Conservative and female MPs had barely improved since the 1930s. At some elections, it had gone backwards. Oh, no, we're not going forwards, we're going backwards. Oh, no, not the Conservatives looking to a better time, thinking we're going backwards. That sounds terrible. But then they're also the, in, in the words in their meaning that being white and being male is going backwards. Yes. Having those around is not good. My Great. pitch, therefore, not for positive discrimination, but it was for positive action. So just politicians speak just yeah, the same thing? Just, it's, yeah, exactly. And again, that's the sort of thing Tony Blair would say. The party of meritocracy needed to accelerate meritocracy. And meritocracy means brown people. <laughs> says David Cameron. A truly meritocratic system is when you are just a woman or brown, and if you're not, leave. Yes. You don't want any white faces looking at you. We told associations that they could pick their candidates from the full list, but stipulated that half of the interviews had to be women. We headhunted great candidates from ethnic minorities and pushed them forward. Our approach was, whatever it takes... We will become the Labour Party, whatever it takes. No matter what illegal discrimination we have to engage in, we will do this. How many white men I have to put out. Okay, exactly. How many white men have to be ejected from the party? You know, By any means necessary. <laughs> like... I mean, literally, it's like the most radical position. By 2010, we had nearly quadrupled our number of female MPs, and in 2015, had six times as many ethnic minority MPs. And look at the state of you now. Look at the state of these debates. Everyone, and I've seen like people from like Peter Hitchens to Owen Jones saying, wow, the current slate of con Conservative Party MPs across the board, with one exception, are idiots. Really low quality idiots. And we'll talk about the exception in a minute. So anyway, the point is, affirmative action made the Conservative Party deeply, deeply mediocre. It made it a Blairite party, and it made it just an untenable proposition for anyone who cares about this country. And so Peter Hitchens is right about the Blairite party. Mm -hmm. I love this. And because uh, obviously the, the leadership elections going around, everyone's like, so Peter, how do you feel about it? <laughs> <laughs> and he says, to anyone who asks me who my favorite <laughs> candidate for Tory leadership, I answer, what is your favorite disease? <laughs> <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> he's right. Stand it there, that's the tweet. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> Nothing can redeem the Tory party, Blairite, without even knowing it until, un unless and until it dissolves itself. And he's so totally on the money here. What is, I love, what is your favourite disease? That's so good. Uh, but it, he's exactly right. And so, Look, If they're still Blairites, then what's the point? Yeah, exactly. What is the point? And, and so just to, just to summarise like, what they've done, well, we know that last year they decided to bring in a million migrants. Tony Blair never did this. Tony Blair never brought in a million new visitors. In fact, Tony Blair these days would have been saying, steady on. Yes, because, Tony uh, Blair was like, look, that's really going to hurt your electoral prospects. Because <laughs> <laughs> Tony Blair was actually good at politics, unfortunately. Uh, and there's no end in sight to this, by the way. Migration Watch have uh, done an article about the government's latest projections. So the government is projecting another four to five million net migrants are set to come and remain in the UK by 2041. So by 2041, so in 20 years, they're expecting it to be... Okay, so I can, I can own a house by 2051, maybe? No. No, no, no. of course you can't. Right. But, uh, but again, this, if... if I, I mean, I think this is very low uh, as a projection. But they're expecting 12 million people to come and 7 million to leave. So at least there's a fair amount of remigration there. Uh, but meanwhile, the natural UK population change is projected to be minus over a million 
in the same period. Uh, and so they expect to have um, you know, a massive increase. And the only increase is by immigration. I mean, I also love, just for a minute, because you remember how these endless arguments were given in which, oh, looking at the projections, uh, Westerners aren't having enough kids. So what we'll do is we'll import people from around the world hmm. and that'll just solve it. And this is obviously stupid on many bases, but it's not just to replace that derelict, you know, one million that aren't being born, yep. that should have been. Instead, it's another 15 million yeah. on top of that. I mean, the house prices should be going down. Yeah. Anyway, when the left see the Conservative Party and their leadership election and what they're doing, they recognise it as a form of replacement. For example, someone like Nezrin Malik, the anti-free speech crusader. Yeah, just who's an honest leftist, usually. An, yeah, that's all right. An honest leftist. There are Tories of diverse origins and skin tones. What they need now is real difference. Right, okay, brilliant. That's, that's great. Because what that means is that diversity means nothing. Diverse origins and skin tones means nothing. That changed nothing. All of those white faces, Cameron was like, oh God, I'm worried about the white... They don't care. They don't care. Why like, would they? Exactly. Why would they? This meant nothing to them. Right. We are witnessing the most racially diverse leadership for a major party in British political history. Yeah, well, that's a big dunk on the Labour Party, isn't it? Candidates over the course, blah, 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 talking about all of the candidates. If similar exercises would take place in the Labour Party today, it's highly unlikely there would be anywhere close to that many ethnic minority MPs in the running, and certainly none with a realistic chance of winning. Does this look and sound like a good thing? Well, it depends. It's also worth asking, a good thing for whom? Now, that's very interesting, isn't it? The, the, the Labour Party is not the party of Blair at this point. They've the Labour Party. Far beyond that. <laughs> no, 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 no. The Labour Party are not the diverse party that the Conservatives are. Blair's legacy lives in the Conservative Party. It doesn't live in Labour. Corbyn's legacy lives in Labour. I, I mean, it's definitely a mixture of Kimberly Crenshaw and Corbyn for sure. From what I watch mm. from the, the oh yeah, I'm not saying it's good. <laughs> okay, <laughs> but what I'm saying is, it's not. Actual, actual traditional Blairs of it, yeah. That's yeah, and it's, it's not. Oh, it's God. not like a diverse party. <laughs> as they would be, uh, they would have it. So again, Cameron hasn't even got Nezra and Malik's approval here because she's like, well, you've taken the thing that is a white structure, which is the Conservative Party, and just replaced the white people with non-white people, but it's still the thing I hated. It's still Anglo-Saxon. Yes. Right. Uh, it's certainly a good thing for the Conservatives who can use the diversity of leadership shortlist to score a point against the left. It's like, yeah, a worthless point. Christ. This is not to imply that there's no place for people of colour on the right. People of colour belong wherever they feel they belong, which is very, very open-minded for a leftist. Normally she'd be like those Uncle Toms. But, um, but she says this, there has to be a point... She said worse than that. Oh yeah, she said <laughs> a lot worse. There has to be a point to diversity, you see. That's why so many people of colour bang on about it. In government, its purpose should be to expand and enhance perspective so that poly policymaking is more compassionate, more observant of the plight of marginalised people who are never represented in, in places that impact their lives the most. Real diversity should disrupt the status quo. The phony version we have ended up with is concerned about changing the appearance of Britain, but not its fundamental nature or the way its resources are shared. There we go. She is saying, look, it is just a replacement that has happened. It has not been the revolution in, to bring we about communism that Tony Blair was promising. Yes, exactly. And uh, you get people like Kehinde Andrews of Gitten the Next One who's just saying, look, this just th this conservative leadership is just, a, a, again, a replacement, a front for white supremacy. Uh, Kehinde Andrews says, it is the most diverse government in history, but also has the most racist policies of any government. It's like, really, Kehinde? <laughs> I mean, I think maybe the 19th century <laughs> may have had some slightly more racist policies. Uh, but it, again, I mean, if, if... Did they? I mean, not in the UK. I mean, I'm thinking like, I'm you know, sure. Nazi Germany or apartheid South Africa. And Kehinde's like, well, oh, that, yeah. that's steady on compared to now. That's a good point. <laughs> I, thought, I thought he had said any UK government. But no, no, you're right. Any government. Any government. So you've got a Nazi Germany, which is well, uh, like liberal and tolerant. South or something. Like, you know. Have you seen the Rwanda plan? <laughs> like, it's basically worse than the Holocaust. It's worse than the slave trade. I mean, what are you talking about? He argues that uh, black and Asian conservative ministers are essentially fronts for white oppression and that they are able to introduce policies that white leaders would not be able to get away with. Again, he thinks of them as a replacement for white people to carry out the right. agenda of oppression. Sure, but also that's a very revealing statement in which oh, he yeah. says there could be perfectly reasonable policies that when... Someone who's brown says them, we all agree yep. with them, yep. but when someone who white says them, all of a sudden the media drags their name through the dirt yes. and they are 
discriminated against for being white yes. for dare suggesting a reasonable stance which, on which is why steve baker bent the knee to swell a brave man because she's a brown woman and he's a white man and they were saying exactly the same things but he was born wrong so who's got the privilege in this country i mean kendi andrews is directly saying yep it's people with brown skin yes that is exactly what he's saying uh and again the again it's no, notice the language of replacement though he's saying well look they've just replaced the white people and they're doing evil things because i'm a communist it's like okay well you can keep saying it. And the point about Labour being basically an ethno party, I think, is very well made by the left wings uh, who are complaining about this. You get to the next one, John, and just scroll down and see the, uh, the list of people. Uh, scroll down a bit and you can see the list of uh, candidates um, on here somewhere. There we go, right? So you've got Rebecca Long Bailey, Lisa Nandy, Keir Starmer, who are the final three. But then if you go down to the ones who are eliminated, it's Emily Thornbury and uh, it, yeah, Clive Lewis and Jess Phillips, right? They're all English, apart from two of them who are half English. So I would count them as English. Based anyway. on their parents. Based on their inheritance, yeah, their heritage. Uh, so, like, that's a very nativist party. So Tony Blair's is, spirit is not alive in the Labour Party. Well, I, I mean, it is, it is, you know, <laughs> the ideology is still there in some respect, because Emily Thornbury being the funniest one. I think uh, it's way past Blairism. Like, sure, <laughs> it's on another like, level of like yeah, yeah. it's they're fully into wokeism. Yeah. But I, I just love it. You got Emily Thornbury on that list, and there's there's no you know ridiculousness of being like oh they're Anglo-Saxon, therefore they're whites, therefore as you know the uh, white nationalist might say, because you end up with Emily Thornbury who is most known in this country for tweeting out a picture of a white van and an England flag and going ugh. <laughs> 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 yes, I'm not saying they're a based patriotic party or anything yeah, like yeah. that, but the the essential thing that they are is the party of the English people, weirdly enough. Like, they're actually... Not <laughs> ideologically, but just the makeup. ideologically. <laughs> like, the actual essential makeup of them, which is just mad. Uh, anyway, but the, the point is, finally, the Conservative leadership debates have been generally disappointing, and I'm not surprised that they're starting to cancel them now, because uh, they're not exactly covering the Conservatives in glory. The only person who's coming out of this looking good is Kemi Badenoch, because... She seems to be the only half-decent candidate. Uh, but, like, immigration is just not put on the table. Liz Truss will, will say things like, oh, no, we've got problems with housing. It's like, okay, well, why? Why do we have problems with housing? Never mentioned it. Dude, Can't... Something happened. Yeah, something <laughs> happened. There's a mysterious excess of people needing houses. Hmm. I mean, we must be destroying houses at a remarkable rate because that's what we love doing in England, just destroying things. She said that she would amend the levelling up bill to replace centralised targets with tax cuts and reduce red tape on opportunity zones to make it quicker and easier to, for developers to build on brownfield land in those areas. Yeah, sure, just keep building, just keep concreting. Eventually the entire country will be concreted over, it'd be brilliant. Anyway, I hate the Conservative Party so much. <laughs> That's a great way to end. <laughs> I really do. Blair won. You know, Blair yeah. won. If you appreciated that segment from the podcast of the Lotus Eaters, you can go to lotuseaters.com to get access to all the premium content we have on the site, such as the Epoch series, this one about Ethelstan, the king of the Anglo Saxons and maybe the first king of England. If you want to follow what else we're putting out, you can follow us on Getter at lotuseaters underscore com on Getter. Thank you and goodbye.